middle of Times Square in New York City. Not a lot of good stuff going on for the teams in New York City right now, but the other teams are doing pretty well, guys. Yeah, a lot of teams have made some plays this weekend. Jets, Giants, not so much, but still got a lot of season left. And we got a lot of week four left as well. Your guys played tonight. Yeah, and Pat Mahomes is on tonight, but if you're waking up on the West Coast, Seahawks won. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Chargers won. Mm -hmm. Raiders. Raiders won. Mm -hmm. Raiders won. It's fun in the NFL right now. Coast to coast. Yeah, it's nice to be on the West Coast, isn't it? Oh, baby. <laughs> right? well, that orange Windows tree. to the wall. Kyle, Grant, <laughs> Peter Schrager, Nate Burleson. My name's Kay Adams, okay. and it was a fierce AFC North rivalry capping off a crazy NFL Sunday. Kyle, let's go to Pittsburgh. Ooh. Let's do it. The Steel City. Go. Remember Shaq's movie, Steel? Yeah. yeah. Anybody tell me his co-star in that movie? Shout it out. Anybody? Uh, no. If you guys don't know, tweet us at GMFB. Who is the most high-profile co-star of Shaq O'Neal in the movie, Steel? <laughs> tweet us right now. <laughs> Joe O'Neal? Flacco. No, Joe Flacco high-profile. Razor sharp on the first drive. The Steelers want that defense. It just ain't coming, my friends, because that is Smokey Brown. John Brown, who is one of the true breakouts of the 2018 season, is awesome. Past two seasons, this has been a house of horrors for Ravens fans. They were up nine late, and they lost last year. And then the Christmas Day game two years ago, where Antonio Brown breaks their heart. This one, though, went differently. Look at Peasy. I love Joey Porter. Coach him up. You're going to need it. Because wake up, fam. Wake up. Hey, wake up, fam. I was going to say the same thing, Nate. You took my line as usual. <laughs> 14 to 6 now. And look, these guys came to fight. Antonio Brown gets the back shoulder. Classic touchdown. We got handshakes and celebrations. They're coached up. But it just felt from the get-go like it was Baltimore's night. There's no other way to put it. Maybe Baltimore's season. They came out fast. There was a little rally from Pittsburgh. But then that's about it. They didn't, because this wasn't the defense letting him down. The offense didn't put up big numbers either. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Baltimore with a fourth and one. Peter, what are they going to dial up? What kind of motion is that? Oh, I don't know. Flying fly. We love it. Learn how to fly. Learn to fly. Tom Petty, Kelly Clarkson. And in that case, it was the Ravens moving the, char the chains. Ben's trying to fight back down nine. No, that's over. Guys, it didn't happen. This seemed to be, the, it was supposed to be the get right night for Pittsburgh. They always have one. It did not happen. Intercept by Anthony Levine Sr. And it is over. Baltimore goes to three and one. Pittsburgh has one win on the young season that actually is not that young anymore. 26 to 14. I can't wait to hear from Joe Flacco. Joe, take a moment and make it all about yourself. What was your take on the game, Joe Flacco? <laughs> Offensive football, it, it takes all 11 guys. It really does. Um, you know, on defense, everybody can mess up and one guy can make a play. On offense, that that, that rarely happens. Everybody's got to play sound football. And, um, you know, when I'm out there throwing for a, a lot of yards today, it, you know, it's not like today was one of the toughest Pittsburgh Steelers games I've ever played. I've played really, really tough football games against these guys and thrown for probably 150. Uh, but I take a lot of pride in some of those games because things were really, really hard out there. I think our guys, the way our guys battled up front today and the way our guys on the outside got open, you know, it, it didn't have to be one of those games. And I was able to stand back there and, and throw the ball with confidence and with not too many guys around me. And that definitely helps. Get some more highlights of Browns and the Raiders. And there is Baker Mayfield, number one overall pick, making his first start. And hey, listen, DBs, if you're going to test him, he going to bless him. And that's Jarvis Landry with the toe tag, toe drag. Sadly, we might see that tomorrow. Baker Mayfield pumped about it. The Browns would go for the two-point conversion. They would lead 28-14. to Here it is, 28-24. And Baker, oh, fresh out the oven. He fumbles the cookies. You can't drop the baked goods on the ground. The Raiders take the ball over. Next Raiders possession, Derek Carr, who you looking for? Skinny post hey. inside. That's Hello. Helson. Okay. Baker, I see you. Derek Carr was doing it, had himself a day. All right, but what about this young man? Uh -uh. Just in the nick of time, shaking the draws off the folks. Fun. Nick Tuck, everybody got angles, and he's going to outrun all of them. How about this? My man finished with three carries, 105 and two TDs. I think you got to get him the ball a little bit more. Okay, 42 seconds left. Same score, 42, 34. Derek Carr, who you looking for? Who you looking for? Derek Cook. Oh, man, I see you cooking up some good. He's saying let's go for two. Once you see those two fingers up, everybody gets excited. Another fade route. Jarvis, you can do it. Jordy can do it, too. I see you, Jordy. Who said he was old? And, and that Aaron Rodgers was the only reason yeah. he was successful. That's supposed to be a not New Jersey, right? Right. Uh -huh. Ah, that's one of them jerseys I, I might buy. You when it happened. You knew. You're right you about knew that. Triggs. Okay. Baker Mayfield. Baker. Trying to go for it. Trying to do something. Tie score. 42. 42. Looking for whoop, Duke Johnson. Mm -mm. Looking for the DJ, and it was broken up. Rashawn Melvin saying no. Unplugged out. Zillow before. You're not going to the DJ. But the kick, that right there is from Matt Crane, the karate kid with the crane kick, and it's good. Oh, yeah, Trey, I see you, Crane. 
The Raiders, they win their first game of the season, 45 to 42. First win for John Gruden since November 30th, 2008. Wow. Hey, listen, John Gruden, like D'Angelo. How does it feel? Hopefully you got a feels like my first win in 100 years. You know, it's just great to be back. I thank our fans for hanging in there with us. There's a lot of, like I said, ups and downs, but um, to get that field goal with our third string kicker, uh, backup snapper, I've uh, never been so nervous on a 29-yard field goal in my life. <laughs> Seahawks and Cardinals in the desert. NFC West battle. Josh Rosen, the youngest Cardinals starter in franchise history. Just wow. 21 years old. But this was the Mike Davis had a day. game. Mike Davis had a game. There's been so many running back woes <laughs> since Marshawn Lynch left. Number 27, Mike Davis. Looked really good yesterday. We had a whole package because Chris Carson was out with the hip. He goes to bed. Take What's your favorite 27? Eddie George. Ron Dane. Ron Dane, Eddie George. Big I think guy. Eddie Lacy wore 27 last Did year for he? them. All right. yeah, so. Eddie Lacy, again, back to back. Wake up, Mike, every night, day. Night. People are sleeping on <laughs> That's exactly. what he's saying. I like that. Good. I need, I need, can you need to interpret these dances for me. Yeah. 14, nothing, but back come the Cardinals. And Josh Rosen played well. He didn't light it up on the staff board, and maybe he didn't exactly yeah. have too many highlight plays, but he looked very confident, and he it's looked like Chad. an improvement at quarterback. Yeah. Finds Chad Williams, touchdown. Let me take that ball with me. This was one that, that hurts. Earl, take Thomas. that with you. Oy. That's a middle finger in the direction of his bench, but he breaks his leg. Hopefully, per Ian Rapport, we can maybe see him back this season, but it does not look good. And who knows what his future is with the Seahawks. Phil Rosen Dawson. with a rope. Rosen, rope. Rosen looked good there. Gregor, you're a Dawson guy. I love Phil Dawson. I've broken the news of where he was going in fantasy right. two years in a row. However. <laughs> Where's he going tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> he misses that one. Yeah. Whoa. I hope not. I don't know. Come on. Come on. Easy. Come on. Too soon, Kyle. Oh, you're right. Too soon. Out comes Sebastian Janikowski because Russell Wilson makes the big play that didn't let Rosen do. Finds Lockett. Get to the line. Get to the line. Tick, 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 tick. Out comes Sebastian. He has been hit and miss with Seattle, but this one was an absolute make. Game over. Suddenly the Seahawks, where everyone said, oh, the end of the era, the end of the era. They're 500. They're 2-2. Two two. They're in this game. It's great, Josh man. Rosen, 0-4 oh the Cardinals, yet to get a win. Here's Josh Rosen. After the loss, and what was his first career to start? Can't wait for this. Great face. No, I mean, we should have won that game up to a field goal. But we all had, like, we had a couple... Uh, we had a couple big drops, uh, a couple big missed reads on my behalf, um, a couple, um, a couple missed blocks, a couple. Like everyone had a little bit here and there, and we all got a lot to. We all got a lot of room to get better on. And I think the the, the relief on that is the fact that we all played um, a very substandard game to all of our um, expectations, and we still were right there at the end. So I mean, imagine what happens when it all clicks. A lot of composure and some optimism coming from Josh Rosen. Let's bring in Ian Rappaport. Is there any optimism surrounding Earl Thomas after that injury? We saw him carted off yesterday. Possible we saw him in his last game with the Seahawks. Very possible we saw him in his last game uh, uh, with the Se in his last game with the Seahawks. As far as optimism, let me find a little bit for you, Kate, just because I'm such a glass half full kind of guy. Yes, Earl Thomas did suffer a lower leg fracture. His season is over, which we saw, of course, as he was carted off, giving the um, sort of salute or whatever to the sideline that appeared to be the Seahawks sideline. I'm sure you guys will get into that plenty after this. But the optimism comes in the fact that he did not tear any ligaments. He did not have a bone displacement. So he may end up having a procedure to put a rod into his foot. But this is not the kind of thing that is going to take a uh, rod into his leg. This is not the kind of thing that is going to take him into the offseason. He should be 100% healthy by the Super Bowl, which means he should be 100% healthy by free agency. And unless the Seahawks franchise tag him, he is going to be one of the most fascinating free agents in the 2019 offseason. A lot of people were connecting docs or at least thinking about what Le'Veon Bell would be thinking watching that injury take place and all of those things happening. And the Steelers season, it's unraveling before them. So what's the latest on Le'Veon Bell? It's pretty clear they need Le'Veon Bell. He needs them because he has not even been paid yet for this year. $3.4 million he has left on the table. And still, at this point, a solution between the two parties does not seem to be imminent. What I'm told is that the Seahawks are actively shopping Le'Veon Bell, something they have done over the course of the last week. Instead of just taking offers and saying, ah, oh, maybe we'll consider that, they are now being the ones doing their due diligence, calling teams, trying to figure out what is the market for this perennial pro bowler. As far as what they're actually asking for, I'm told a second-round pick 
and a good player, which is a lot. And the reason that's a lot is not just because it's a lot, but also because it has to be a one-year rental. There's no guarantee. They're not even allowed, as new team, is not even allowed to negotiate a contract with Le'Veon Bell. It would have to be a $10 million cap hit, a one-year rental, and then only begin the conversations for his new team in free agency. All of that makes a new deal extremely complicated. All that makes all of this extremely messy. Thanks so much, Ian Rappaport. Talk to you in a little bit. We're going to talk takeaways. But first, you hung out with Rap Sheet. You didn't really get to talk about it. All I would do if I was hanging out drinking with Rap Sheet is steal his phone and go through it. <laughs> It is a powerful phone. I it's would true. be like, can I see that? There's They're a great like, All the secrets. A lot of secrets, a lot of secrets. And one of the secrets is that none of those glasses were half empty or half full. They were all the way <laughs> empty. The Rappaports are an awesome family, two great kids, amazing wife. And you could take uh, anything that Mitch Trubisky did or Tom Brady did this weekend, not as, as impressive as Leah Rappaport's cheesecake that she brought. Homemade okay, cheesecake, Leah. I'm licking the pan. It was that good. Rappaport's incredible family. Let's um, talk about the games, though. We let's do it. Highlights from three of them. What is your yes. big takeaway from this slate of matches? First of all, a quick pay, uh, quick payoff. I asked who is Jack O'Neill's um, most high-profile co-star in the movie Steel. Homer Cash on Twitter called it out. Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson. Nelson. Also, several people. Apparently, Ray J is in that movie. Oh, I, yeah, I appreciate his other film work, but I didn't know this <laughs> at all. Judd Nelson. Now, Kay, you asked about the games. I did. <laughs> um, Browns Raiders, I hate referee radio, but let's go to Rick and Berea and talk about how the Browns got screwed this weekend. There was two calls that everybody is screaming out this morning. It's our duty to talk about them. First up one with about six minutes to play. Carr's going to drop back and get hit by Miles Garrett, and the ball's going to come loose. The Browns recover. They are off and running probably, no, it's blown dead that they blew the play dead. People are freaking out on Twitter. Most notably, Kirk Herbstreit of the college game is going apoplectic on this, because if you watch this, this is your classic strip sack. The ball's out, and it was out. blown dead, and Browns fans are saying that was a, a, a touchdown for us. We're blowing away. We're going, now this is the worst. Peter, this is now this in is. up eight with 141 to play. They had a third and two. What happened? They called a first down. They get the first. They, get the they first can down. take a knee now. The game is over. That's the game. That's the game. They call the first down. The league says, let's review it. Let's go up. Think Dean Blandino's on Fox saying, no, you can't overturn that. There's no evidence. They There's no way you can they overturn it. They say that, that it was such conclusive evidence. They can't. Fourth down comes along. They punt it away. The Raiders come back and win. At Browns fans have reason to be upset. These are very, two very, very controversial calls on a Ridiculous morning. Ridiculous calls. When there was a lot of great play on the field, it seems like we're talking about the officials this morning. Mm. The only way we, we, we talk about the officials, it, we don't go out of our way to do it. But if you really think that they changed the outcome of a game and some team got robbed, that was tough. Twice. Really, really tough. Because Baker Mayfield's taking a knee. That, they get that first that time, it's first over. first one, what's the argument for the, it being the right call? Super conservative, trying to protect their car. The, get the defenders closing in, just blow it dead. It was premature. It's tough. Tough. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, I definitely feel for the Cleveland Browns fans because I was on the side of Cleveland watching those two plays. For me, my takeaway out of those three games, it's Earl Thomas. It's Earl Thomas. And there's right. so many layers to this onion. You want to peel back, you know, the... The end of Legion of Boom, and it's crazy because, ironically, uh, Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor both were injured on the same field and taken off in a way where you start to look and think, could this be the end of something that was so special? Me being from Seattle and what they brought to that city, a sense of pride and a sense of toughness for so long, I mean, since the days of Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. Mm -hmm. Toughness hasn't really been attached to Seattle sports, right. and they brought it back, and we, and we had that. But Earl Thomas being out, and then the gestures to the sideline, you know, and Le'Veon Bell tweeting in, and I, you know, I can't do the gesture on TV because I want to keep my job. Mm -hmm. Le'Veon Bell basically gave two fingers to the Steelers, saying that's the reason why I'm not back yet because I want an investment on my life because my season, possibly my career could end at the snap of a finger or the snap of my leg. Um, but I will say this, and I said it earlier in the show, I understand where he's coming from because when you get injured, your life flashes before your eyes. You know, the, the reaper comes and looks at you and says, let me get your athletic ability. Mm -hmm. How fast you run, how high you jump, how quick you move, your agility. Let me take all of that, fam. And you might not be the same guy. Matter of fact, you might be sitting down for the rest of your life and I'll come see you in 20 years when you want to go play catch with your son. That's what athletes think about, and it's unfortunate. But if I put my suit on and my blazer on, I'm sitting in the front office, they're saying, that's exactly why we don't pay these guys as much money as we would like to after they've been injured and they're getting up in age. So being on the side of the players always, wanting guys to squeeze every last red cent out of the league, I feel for Earl Thomas. But understanding how this business works, I get why he didn't get paid early before the season started.
Oh. I look at the first game you guys were talking about, the Steelers and the Ravens, and okay. I, I just think the Ravens exercised a lot of demons last night. Oh, that so. place in Pittsburgh has been uh, a nightmare for them the past two seasons. They've missed the playoffs the past two seasons, but if they had beaten the Steelers on Christmas two, week, two years ago, they go to the playoffs. And last year, of course, they're up nine late, and Antonio Brown breaks their heart. And I was waiting for that Steelers, like, come back. And the Ravens just bled the clock, played conservative football, got turnovers. And I don't know if it's going to be the Bengals or if it's going to be the Ravens or even if it's the upstart Browns. I just don't know if the Steelers have that second gear this year. In the next mm. five games the Steelers have, Falcons are coming to town. The Falcons can't be stopped on offense. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know if that Steelers defense can stop the Falcons. Then you go to Cincinnati. You got the Browns again. Then you got the Ravens in Baltimore. Mm. Then the Panthers are coming to town. No joke. The Steelers have a gauntlet coming up. And if Le'Veon Bell's not on the field, I just don't know if they have the horsepower to find a way this season to get into that second gear. Usually they do. Yeah. Last night, I thought it was coming. Just never no. did. Steelers Falcons, that could be another 90 point game. You're right. We're looking at between those two defenses and what they've got on offense. Sort of wild. Quick shout out just from the, you were bringing Josh Rosen on the map here. From his perspective, what he did for David Johnson, getting him more involved. Love seeing him have his first 100 yard game. He had 112 total yards. He does have three touchdowns in the last four weeks. So thank you guys. Keep giving him the ball. Prayers okay, up. we're going to take a break here. The Niners fought hard with those Chargers yesterday. This was a great game, closer than I thought it was going to be. They did fall short at the end. We'll take you through all the highlights after this. Melvin Gordon, you are amazing, but we'll show you everything you need to see. And I said it to start the show. It hasn't been pretty. They haven't been lighting it up, but the Titans gritting out wins. They are 3-1. and one. Which team were you most surprised by with that record Ooh. to start the season? Howdy, folks. For under $20,